Like the aorist passive, the future passive indicative is formed off of the sixth principal part. Uh, this makes it a little odd. You would expect you just add a sigma, but in fact you don't. Uh, we're going to take that sixth principal part. We're going to drop off the augment, right, because the future is the future. Uh, we're going to add onto that stem. Remember that stem usually ends in an eta, or a theta rather. We're going to add an eta. We're going to add our sigma, just like we do for all futures, right? And then our primary medio passive endings. This seems very complicated, but it's not. Uh, and we'll take a look at one particular verb to show you how it works. So, luo, we're going to start with our sixth principal part, and we're going to remember we're going to take off the epsilon augment. Our stem then is going to be luth. We're going to add an eta. We're going to add the sigma. Right, so this is basically our, our theme vowel, our sigma tense marker, and then we're going to add our endings. So luth, ace, oh my, luth, ace, oh my. Luth, a, sigma, a, luth, ace, luth, ace, etai, luth, ace, etai. Should be no accent there. Luth, ace, omatha, luth, ace, omas, luth, ace, omatha, luth, ace, este, luth, ace, este, and luth, ace, ontai, luth, ace, ontai. So if you look at just the endings, my, psi, tai, omai, a, etai, omatha, este, ontai, the endings are just like you would find on the present passive. We've got a sigma, just like you find in all futures. And then we've got our stem from the sixth principal part, and we've got this eta. Now the eta is actually already there, uh, so if you want to consider the stem to be dropping the new, uh, that's your prerogative. Um, I like to think of the stem as just the luth uh, and, and move on from there. But that's how you form the future passive indicative. Make sure you drop off the augment, because we're not in the past tense. Add your eta, your sigma, and your endings.